Now, when we know how to work with the form editor window, it's time to find out how users interact with databases. I suggest that we start by looking at the attributes of our document sales stored in the database. Here we can see only manually created attributes, as the platform stores the default ones inside the document. Now, consider the form attributes that, in fact, are the representation of the document attributes within the form. Note that attribute object in our form represents document sales, the configuration object. However, it is not the same object, but rather it's copy that links the form to the database. Our next step is to describe a connection between form attributes and form items. Form attributes store data that forms require. Form items visualize and modify form attributes as well as display and run commands. Form sets of attributes describe data that forms store, display and allow to modify. At that, form attributes themselves do not enable data viewing or editing. These are form items connected with the form attributes that make it possible to view and edit data. In short, object attributes relate to the form via form attributes, and form attributes become visible on the form through form items. Basically, all items are displayed on the form. And this is how we make data from the database visible on the form. As it is a two-way road, users can utilize form items to add data into form attributes and from there to object attributes, or in other words, to the database. Well, before we call it a day, let us consider some examples of how we can use form attributes and form items. For this purpose, we switch to the form module and check what we can do to the main attribute of form object, that is actually the configuration object document sales. As you can see in the example, all we can do is access object attributes and apply method property, since this attribute is a collection of other attributes. Still, as we can read, write, modify, and display this data on the screen, there is no need for any additional properties. Now, consider properties of form items. There are many various properties that define how items can be displayed in forms. The final step in this basic study of forms is to learn how to deal with properties using program code. And for this purpose, we create two commands, item and object, and then create handlers for them on the client. But later, we should have more time to talk about the client server operation. And this is it. Now we want to display on the screen the values stored in the form item and the form attribute. Let us switch to the 1C Enterprise mode to check the result. Now, as we click the button Object, we get the source data since we address the form attribute that contains this data. As we click the button Item, we get some strange value, form field, that is not our contractor. It's time to consult the Syntax Assistant. Indeed, form items of type field display respective attributes and forms. At that, form items have no data of their own. So, why refer to them in our code? Well, consider the following example. In this piece of code, we refer to form item item, that is our button. Or more specifically, we refer to its property visible, that sets the form item visible on the form. We assign false, and as we click this button, it goes away before the form closes. See, it's gone. Hence, we can change the visibility of items in our form right within the code. Now, all of the above makes up the basic approaches to handling forms in 1C Enterprise. This knowledge gives you a sufficient basis to continue learning about interface customization.